Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the Source Browser, one of the main windows in our SimVision debug solution. Specifically, these are the things we'll be covering within this video. I'm going to switch over now to the demo. This is the same demo that we've been using in the other videos within the series. To launch the Source Browser, we can do this in a number of different ways. The way that I'm going to choose is to simply search for an object of interest in our design browser, and in this case it's going to be the APB driver, and I'm going to click up in the Send To toolbar to send this over to the Source Browser. I could have also right-clicked on the object and said Send To Target Source Browser. So once the Source Browser opens, right now, um, we have uh, a number of areas, key areas to introduce. So the top section are where all of the interesting toolbar buttons are. So in this case, we have quite a few enabled, but you can enable or disable and add and remove items as you like. Um, some items are more important than others within this toolbar. Probably the most important item to look at is the source annotation. And that's the callout, the little orange callout here with the check mark on it. So right now, notice that there's no values being represented for any of the variables in the source browser. If I click on this item, now we see source annotation placed for any of the variables that we actually have values for. Um, so that's very important. The other item that's very important is the send to toolbar. This allows you to highlight items and send them to other objects, sorry, other windows within our SimVision solution. The next uh, toolbar that's fairly important is the simulation control. This allows you to run the simulation also to single step through your code as well as jump to the current execution point. The scope box indicates to you where you are within your debug scope. So if we hover over this, the tooltip tells us that we, we are currently in the UART bad parity test and within there we're inside the UART CTRL testbench0.apb0 master driver. This is the hierarchical location. Shorthand to that is the at 10917 underscore 5 class handle. That's the shorthand to access this object within memory. There's also the files dropdown, which shows us related files to this particular file that we're debugging. On the right hand side is our search fields. So if we click on this item here, now we can do text searches anywhere within the environment. So in this case, sorry, in the file. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight something. Notice that it's underlined, our VIF. I'm going to click on search. Notice that it's pre-populated with VIF. And now I can search up and down through the file using the binoculars to find this item of interest. I can also jump directly to any particular line. Some sidebars that are interest, uh, interesting when doing source debug are the design browser sidebar. This allows you to navigate your hierarch hierarchical objects within the simulation. And um, to once you've navigated through your files, if you want to go back to any previously viewed file, you simply need to click on the previous button the same way you would look at any browser, uh, sorry, the same way that you would use any browser. And um, if you want, you can click on the drop down uh, box. This will, this will show you all of your previously viewed files. Okay. Another sidebar of interest when doing source uh, debug is also the file browser sidebar. This shows you all of the files that compose your simulation. So system Verilog files, E files, as well as assertion files, all of them are viewable here within the files browser sidebar. And I can search on any particular um, uh, any particular item searching within, oh, sorry, APB, not ABP, and I have a master and a slave, right? And these are, of course, clickable, and I can jump directly to the source. So I'm going to go back, and uh, now I'm going to show you a little bit about some of the interesting things you can do within the source browser itself. So we have syntax highlighting, and notice that anything with an underline here, we can perform actions on. So for instance, I can right click on this item and I could say send it out to, let's say, a watch window. And this will bring the virtual interface into a watch window and I can expand it out and see all of the fields within that virtual interface and all of the values. Now if I move down a little bit more, also notice uh, that the um, source annotation for dynamic objects shows us the class handle 
or the hierarchical object, um, depending on the data type of interest. Now, if I double click on the virtual interface here, it also takes me in the source to the actual um, interface, and I can see all the source annotations. Okay, also the same is true if I click on this particular config object. This takes me to the class, and I can see all of the source annotations there as well. Now, if I have a macro being shown, I can also expand out that macro. So notice if I hover over here, I see a plus sign. If I just click on that plus sign, it'll expand it in line in the source browser and show us all the source annotation for any of the fields within the macro. And I can do that as needed. So expand out one level macro or all level macros down inside. Here's a function. This is a function new. If I have a function within the source that refers to, uh, that, sorry, that calls a function, I can just double click on the function itself and this will take me to the, uh, the actual function implementation. And in this case, I was clicking on a child which was referring to its parent's new call. So here when I double click, I'm taken directly to the parent. Now let's do a couple of other interesting things. Let's set a breakpoint. So I'm going to do a little bit of running here. I'm going to go down to line 140 something inside of the drive address phase. To set a breakpoint, I just double click and a breakpoint is added. If I double click again, it's disabled. If I right click, I've got some other options here about setting breakpoints as well. So I'm going to re-enable this and I'm going to run my simulation by clicking on play. So I encounter the breakpoint and now notice that the arrow here is a golden arrow. This is the same arrow that shows up here in the toolbar. So if I navigate away from this particular code and I want to very quickly come back to it, all I need to do is just click on this execution point and this will jump me directly back to what the current line that's executing is in the simulator. Now stepping through code is quite simple. There's a number of different buttons though depending on what we want to do. If we want to jump into a particular subprogram or function call, I would click this button. If I want to step over um, any subprogram or function calls, but also be jumped around to different threads, I would click this button. If I want to maintain focus in the current thread and just run to the next statement, I click on this button. So this is the one that I most commonly use. So if I click here, you'll see that this will automatically jump to the next item, uh, sorry, the next line and the next line and so forth. So I can single step through my code execution very easily. Now, one thing I didn't show was um, how to send things around to different windows. So I showed the watch window, but let's say that we wanted to uh, send an item out to the uh, waveform window. And in fact, let's take a look at a different file to do that. Let's look at some RTL signals. So I'll click on my uh, DUT top, and here's some RTL signals. So I have source annotation available. If I want to take a look at any of these signals in the source, I can simply highlight it and say Control w and that will send it out to the waveform window automatically for me. Or if I want to send a group of signals, I can just highlight any sections or regions of the source code, and I can say Control w and any values that are highlighted as I do that will automatically be sent out to the waveform. So you'll see all of our values here. So that's a quick tour through some of the features of the source browser within our SimVision debug solution. Do check out other videos within the series.